G'day guys, welcome back. Uh, we're back out here. Well, back out here, still out here from the last one. So, here we are, we're out here. Um, last episode, if you missed it, pulled down those two turbos, came to the consensus that I reckon it is just the short runners on the cast manifold causing too much heat on the ceramic turbine wheels, causing issues with the turbo. <gasps> So I'm just out here uh, about to try and fit up. I've got a GT3582 here that came off the Cruiser. Um, unfortunately, I don't think I'm gonna be able to complete the setup today regardless because I actually need some different fittings for this thing. Um, the fittings aren't all the same. Um, unless I've got some around here, I'll have to have a dig around and have a look, see what fittings I've got. But uh, what I've decided to do, uh, even though there's not really any oil starvation issues with that, the oil test I did on this car, probably two episodes ago you saw now, um, still just doesn't seem like enough oil is coming through that feed uh, for me with the turbo hooked up. I reckon there is too much um, restriction. So I'm gonna decide not to run restrictors on this turbo this time. Uh, as I said before, I feel like the worst case scenario is that it blows oil out the seals, which means on the exhaust side, I burn some oil and on the intake side, I get some upper cylinder lubricant. So to me, it's, it's a, not really a lose situation that much um it may get pretty severe but we'll just see how long this turbo lasts really so the plan is to try and get the 35 on the manifold because it is not going to cost me anything because we already have the turbo so a bit bigger than i would like to go on this setup on the on the 30 35 a2 is really a bit big but it is a 0.64 housing so it is a very small rear housing now uh look at the garrett um what do you call them I looked at the Garrett compressor maps for the uh, 3076 with a 0.8 housing and the 3582 with a 0.6 and the compressor maps are almost identical, they're very similar. So uh, it shouldn't be too big of a problem. I just have to make sure it's actually physically going to fit because I did have to make some room even to fit the 3076. So um, it's gonna be a matter of chucking on the manifold, make sure it clears and dummy it onto the car and make sure it fits. Righto, step one, fit to manifold. Does clear. Uh makes cool noises did also realize that this is a two and a half inch outlet so it's actually going to fit with the silicon bend that i have so it's another thing that's going to probably prevent me at this stage a few things i might need to get a lot of these fittings are different obviously this is not how it's going to stay clocked i've just clocked it this way so it clears the manifold so that i can test fit it to the block and make sure it fits my you know the rest of my setup clears my engine mount all that crap so so there you go it actually sort of fits like a glove I'm actually pretty sure the, the housing and everything, well, the turbo overall is shorter than a 3076 because it's actually further back from the engine mount than the last one was. And uh, it still clears it under there. So it's all good, it's a go. -er. So it's all gonna fit. It's the same dump and everything. It's gonna fit fine. So from here, I just need to dig around and see if I've got a few things. So the whole idea of using this 35 is the fact that it's not going to cost me any money to use it. Um, so I don't want to keep throwing money at turbos for this thing if it's just going to keep killing them. So the idea was to chuck this 35 on, um, give it one more hit, get it retuned properly, try and see if having the timing less retarded, trying to keep a lot of that combustion heat out of the manifold is going to keep these turbos alive. Um, so that was the whole idea of using it like this. So I'm not even going to get new gaskets. I'm going to take these gaskets off, re-copper coat them, and uh, reuse all these gaskets. I'm gonna try and find all the fittings I need. Hopefully I've got them all. Um, so yeah, the whole idea of this is to get out of it for nothing, to, to make sure that this turbo is gonna stay alive before I go investing any money into a new stuff. So that's why this is happening the way it is. Alrighty, so this is gonna be my new oil drain because the fitting's actually a different size on this turbo than the other one. Um, so I'm just gonna have to like rubber tape that up to make it fit three quarter inch hose. So there's gonna be a few dodgy things I'm gonna have to do to get this to work with what I've got. Um, water fittings are a different size. Luckily, the Kinegawa line kit had the right size fittings for the turbo, so I can still use the same water lines. That's all sweet. My oil feed, I'm going to have to use this banjo belt again because, as you can see, the feed is a M12, I think. Pretty sure it's M12. And uh, I don't have any sort of dash 4 fittings uh, for M12. So this banjo belt is pretty much the only thing I've got that has to suit this that I can use my dash 4 feed on. And obviously, as you saw a couple episodes ago, uh, because this is a banjo belt for a ball bearing Kinegawa turbo, it is uh, like obviously quite a big restriction. So what I'm gonna do is do the real big dodgy and just drill this out. <laughs> I'm gonna drill this out so it's nice and big. 
um, so it's less restrictive. Definitely not an ideal thing to do, but you gotta do what you gotta do with what you got sometimes. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. So here you can see the difference between one that's drilled out and uh, that's the, the restriction that was in it uh, that came with the kit. So massive, massive difference there, having drilled that out a bit. Um, so you can see the difference there, the one on the left that's been drilled out. All I did was I went back over it with an even burger drill bit just to make a bit of a countersink in the side so that the uh, oil's got somewhere to pull and find its way into the, the banjo. And yeah, you can see how how massively different that is day and night so hopefully there should be plenty of oil flow through that banjo now it's actually not even as dodgy as i thought it was going to be it's actually pretty pretty profesh if you ask me i'd sell that to a customer well, as always using some copper gasket cement i'm gonna get these swimming in copper gasket cement because they're second hand they're not new ones um all i've got is duper color genuine generally i'm not a big fan of duper color i generally like the uh the permtex or the vht one but it's what i've got so it's what i'm using Alrighty, turbo's on the manifold. Uh, due to the fact that the flange on this housing is so much thicker than the last one, I can't lock nut all of them. So I've decided to use spring washers instead of flat washers this time. Um, I did get lock nuts on the front too, but uh, the rear two are just a bit short. So hopefully they hold up, don't work their way loose, fingers crossed. Um, so next thing is just to start getting all the fittings and everything else on this turbo I need. What I'm going to do due to the fact that this has been coming loose on both turbos, uh, when I've removed them, it, the Banjo bolt has been a little bit loose. So what I'm gonna do is just put a little bit of Loctite on it and just try and Loctite it in the housing so that it doesn't come loose. And uh, yeah, apart from that, water fittings, which are different to the other turbo because they're smaller, but lucky the Kinegawa kit has them in it. Same thing, I'm going to copper gasket RTV those in because I really just don't have time for water leaks. So <clears throat> that's the plan there, same as the last time. Seemed to be a pretty good setup that worked. It didn't leak at all. Ta-da! It's together, it's ugly, hopefully it doesn't leak, but um, I thought I could get away with just taping that fitting up to get the uh, three-quarter inch hose to sort of work, but I couldn't, so I fished around and actually found this reducer. Problem is that it makes it very long, so it's going to have to do something like that. I don't know, I'll, I'll have a look when I get it in there, so hopefully I can make that work, but apart from that, she's all ready pretty much to go back in. I just gotta clean up the surfaces, clean them with some thinners. I gotta choose the best two gaskets out of these last two. <laughs> They're both pretty average, as you can see, starting to split. And this one's the same one end, this end. I reckon this one's probably the better gasket. It's a bit split at that end and this end, but this is the last one. So I reckon that's better than this one, just to be honest. So yeah, I don't know, I might try. Try this one. I'll clean it up with some thinners, re uh, copper gasket it, coat it, get it swimming, and I'll uh, clean up the block and the manifold and clean them with thinners as well. And then uh, we're just about looking to whack this back on. 35s have got the ceramic coated housing too, so that's you know cool, I suppose. Nice and pretty.
for the most part, turbo is installed. Just working on doing the dump. And uh, then once the dump's on, I'll jack it. I actually might jack it up and do the lines first before the dump gets in the way. That's what I might do. I'm just working on uh, the gasket at the moment. I've had to use the gasket that actually came off the back of that turbo because I don't know where the one that was on mine is. It's probably on the uh, ground next to Clean Zone Raceway somewhere. But anyway, that's right. Like I've got one. So same thing. Reuse gaskets. All reuse gaskets. So anyway, I'll jack this up and put the lines on. All right, lines are all hooked up. So before I go any further, I'm going to just fill it full of coil again and just get it warm enough so that it idles. And then I'm going to do the old oil feed test again uh, that you saw me do in a couple episodes ago. I'm going to try it now with this new, uh, the way I've drilled out the banjo bolt and the new oil feed. And hopefully we see a lot more oil coming through that feed. Alrighty, so that's after about a minute at idle, about 20 PSI, not really much better than it was before, which is surprising. So I'll do it again, and this time I'll get Brendan in the holder bottle and I'll rev it up a little bit. But So that's with a little bit of revs, um, much better. But anyway, I reckon it's just obviously RB30 things with low oil pressure and generally low <laughs> oil things, just RB things. Anyway, it's still better than it was before, so whatever. We'll uh, just run it like that and we'll see how we go. So this is one of the big reasons I don't like Jupiter color, is this seems to always happen with every Jupiter color can I have. And I, I do, I am very careful to clean them out. It still just seems to happen. If any of you remember watching the build, this happened when I tried to wrinkle black a lot of stuff on the uh, RB. Both, color, both cans of Jupiter color just shat themselves. Um, so this is why I don't particularly like Jupiter color. I'm a much bigger fan of VHT or ideally the actual Permatex copper gasket cement. But anyway. Like I said, it's what's here, it's what I got, so it's what I'm using. But uh, we're nearly there, dump's on, just got to get the screamer back on and then put the intake on and we're pretty much set again. And then I just got to double check, obviously, oil, seeing as I've tested it a few times and pulled some oil out of it. So. All right, we are back together. A few things I've got to sort. I've got to sort out this pod filter and whatnot, but uh, at least now I can start it up and check for some exhaust leaks. Hopefully there's none. But apart from that, we are back together. And, uh, yeah, there's a few things I'll need to do tomorrow. But it's been a good... Good couple of days. It's been nice. Good yeah, progress, nice. mate. Yeah, nice. Nice. How good do exhaust leaks sound? Oh, fuck yeah. All right, so it appears to be leaking pretty much the whole, uh, you know, head to manifold gasket. Here I was, uh, I was like, yeah, I'll just reuse it. I'll coat it in copper spray. Didn't work. Um, it is just like, it is, Deadly leaking, like so bad. I've, I, yeah, like I, I knew using a secondhand gasket might turn out bad, but holy crap, I can't believe that literally like the whole thing is just leaking. So anyway, evidently can't get away with that. So it's all got to come off again. And I'm just that stoked with it that I'm going to sign off the video here because I'm so happy about having to do that again. I can't wait. Um, Yay! Can't wait to schedule that in. Uh, it's just, it's going to be so great. I can't wait. So thanks for watching everyone. Hope you enjoyed and uh, tune in for the next episode where I don't know what we're doing, but hopefully probably nothing burning it to the ground or something.